have Ziad Amui, uh, who is the founding member and past president of Borderless Alliance in West Africa, which is a, a regional private sector led multi uh, stakeholder advocacy group promoting basically economic integration and and very much active in, in trying to boost uh, regional integration. So let me now turn to Ziad, that is also certainly going to cover the same territory of small holders role uh, because of uh, what he has been involved with and what he has been writing about. But it's a pleasure really to welcome you and give you the floor, Ziad. Thank you, Professor Lopez, and thank you for the organizers for this very pertinent series. Doing business across West Africa is costly with the delays, the bulky procedures, the lack of implementation of the regulations, but also it is a dangerous affair. So there's smuggling, there is a security issue, there is terrorism in the Sahel, and many. And this creates an, uh, an environment where we have a proliferation of non-tariff measures and non-tariff barriers, most of which the most visual representation of these non-tariff barriers are the checkpoints but the checkpoints are not the only issue. And it is only by leveraging on the partnership between the various stakeholders involved, all the stakeholders involved actually, in order to repeal the non-tariff barriers from these corridors, in order to ensure that the potential for agriculture, but also for the other areas of economic development of Africa be unleashed. So that the absent effective mechanisms of dispute resolution, with regarding the lack of the implementation of regional regulations, we will continue to face trade issues that would hamper the ability of West Africa or even the African continent itself to unlock its potential. And that is why many of us are very excited about the upcoming commencement of trade under the AFCFTA, which will also have an element or a component of dispute uh, resolution, which is lacking from ECOWAS and other regional economic communities across Africa. And this will allow a mechanism to make sure that the regional regulations are implemented in a fair and comprehensive way that defends the law, the, the rights of countries, but also the rights of the other main stakeholders within this system. In an age of scarcity and external shocks, Partnership is the way forward. And when I talk about food partner, I'm talking about building more resilient food and agribusiness value chains across, uh, across Africa. Of the many laudable ideas that we have, two main ideas stick in my mind. And the first one is the alliances of value chains, something similar to what the Global Shea Alliance is doing with an all value chain approach, you know, to develop the value chain and improve, first of all, the productivity of the markets, and second, the marketing elements of the value chain. And something like African Cashew Alliance, which focuses solely on cashew production, yield, marketing, and advocacy. Now, another area of partnerships is something similar to what, for example, AGRA is doing with its regional food trade coalition. And that is a data-driven support system for African agriculture. And so by bringing together multi-stakeholders on evidence base, you are able to leverage the networks of stakeholders who traditionally are not used to working with each other, whether groups of the agencies or regional economic communities, or even members of the private sector enterprise who perceive each other as uh, different. You know, private sector, people talk about private sector. It's not one private sector. It's so many different private sectors with different priorities. So part of the advocacy on rallying the support for pushing agriculture forward is not only by engaging with the policymakers. It's first of all in engaging with the representatives of the private sector to bring them together to a common understanding and dra drafting a common priority, and then moving forward with that agenda to engage with the public sector and decision makers. So that's a great question. And that was actually part of an annex to my notes, which I was thinking about over the weekend. And it has to do with, first of all, the inclusivity element. You know that about 70 to 80 percent, depending on which countries or which regions in Africa, are informal. And so if you are a policymaker in a country that has 70 to 80% informal trade, 
whether petty trade with or cross-border trade. And how can you be sure that the policies that you are making will actually be in the benefit of these traders who are engaged in informal trade, mainly because of, the, of their inability or their lack of capacity to scale up to a formal level because of the prohibitively expensive costs. That is one element. So the inclusion of the more marginalized groups, including women, cross-border traders, traders in petty traders, and then young entrepreneurs is very crucial for the success of any initiative similar to the AFCFTA. If we do not deal with gender mainstreaming and with the inclusion of youth, then we are actually creating a situation with the AFCFTA where we are widening the gaps between those who are able to unlock the benefits and those who are unable. And so for this to happen, the Borderless Alliance has started to engage more actively and reach out to the youth and the women cross-border traders, first of all, by uh, uh, co conducting surveys at the, uh, at the border crossings in, with partnerships with the Women Traders Association. We currently have submitted a, a report on the state of cross-border uh, trade, uh, which we are waiting for ECOWAS to, uh, to, to sanction so that we will be able to share that along with this information. But also we have been engaging more with the representatives of the organized youth of, uh, in, in Africa. Uh, some of them include the chartered, the young professionals of CILT, the world, uh, the WEF uh, uh, global shapers, and many other groups. And then we are widening because if there is no inclusion, there is no ability to reach out to the policymakers to explain what the challenges are and what the priorities are. And as we are speaking, this brings us to another point, and it has to do directly with the ongoing negotiations of the AFCFTA phase, uh, phase two. We haven't heard anything, no updates about what are these negotiators who represent governments are talking about. And I have specifically mentioned this point in a question to the Secretary General, His Excellency Wam Kelly, a couple of weeks ago, when Ghana inaugurated its AFCFTA national program and national export development strategy. I said that we have absolutely no idea as representatives of the private sector, what are the negotiators talking about? Now it so happens that I as a technical expert know that these are the various protocols and procedures and, and the, that the negotiators are engaged in. But that does not mean that we have a say on how to influence certain areas which might affect large areas of marginalized groups. So what's the way forward? Lack of information, lack of engagement, and then it doesn't help that we have a lot of informal trade flows that needs to be monitored. Now, look, there is an ongoing debate, I'm sure you're very familiar with, about the formalization. Do we need to formalize, or do we have to keep a situation where you have to include and then formalize, because if you don't include, you can't formalize. So there are two different issues. Formalization is one thing, and then inclusion is another thing. And I don't see why we can't include in our policies safety nets that ensure that the marginalized groups do not get more or less fair share of the growing uh, African continental market through good policies. But to know these policies, we don't have to wait until June, January 1st to say, for governments to come and say, this is your policy, go and read it and start trading according. What if we don't like the policies? What if the organized private associations come up and say, hey, we don't like this? What if Nantes or Guta or whoever comes up and says, we don't agree? What do we do? It's, it's a complicated discussion. And you raise a very pertinent point here. Mm -hmm.